Um, he's doing good. He's um, been doing a lot of personal development and education, watching a lot of um, product videos online and stuff by doTERRA. And so he's been spending a lot of time with that and trying to reach out. I think he's still a little bit uncomfortable being a, a guy approaching women at the store. <laughs> he feels weird about. Right. He doesn't want to make them feel weird. Um, That'd be a creative way for him, for men to talk to men about this because it's not like they don't have health needs. But that'd be an interesting thing to explore. Yeah, so we at night we talk about ideas of what can kind of maybe work for the next day, you know, when he's at work and things like that. Right. Just conversations and, and find needs with chatting with people and then and then offer maybe an idea for them or something. If we get Chad a couple of key people and then help him with the referral process, that might be his best way to go about. So it's not quite, it doesn't look like he's hitting on someone. <laughs> so. Well, and talking to a lot of these mentors who've ranked, I, I have a few people I've worked with recently who aren't quite exactly above me. They're kind of diagonal for me and they've given, they've all of a sudden, you know, ranked a few ranks in a matter of months. And so I talked to him about what they had done and, and uh, their husbands also do the business as well. And it started with the wife doing it and then the husband came in. And, and so their advice was he just needs to find one builder, like needs to find his own contact and find that builder and then help that builder grow. And I know Chad's kind of thing is like, okay, Hillary, I need new contacts, but you stole all of mine <laughs> because you've been doing it for two years. You've already hit all of my contacts. So, which I do admit that's kind of a disadvantage. Gotcha. Well, it still comes down to wanting to think outside the box and figuring it out, though. But um, anyway, so, okay, cool. I'll have to send him an email. Okay. All right. So Barb just asked a question about, my understanding is, Barb, your question is, how do I bring in a new builder from teaching a class? Is that right? Okay, so um, let me look at what we're going to cover here today. It, it's slightly a broad question. Um, I mean, you're asking questions, your phone calling system, all those things are pieces to this. You know, you have a class, you meet people, and then you figure out which ones you know, you call and ask questions to see if anyone's interested or when somebody signs up as a preferred customer, you know, would you also be interested in, you know, making some money at this? You see what I'm saying? It comes back to all the basics that we've been talking about. So initially planting the seed and seeing if it's even a, something even on their radar. Well, it's, Planting, it's a little more than planting seeds. I mean, it's planting, fertilizing, watering, seeing what comes of it, you know, taking advantage of that fruit when something starts blossoming and nurturing it. Do you know what I mean? So it's not just plant the seed and hope this happens and happens, but being deliberate by asking those questions and, um, just had a thought, um, you don't have to just wait to see if something's going to happen. You can definitely, you know, these phone calling systems, you should now start having a phone calling system that's for potential recruits, one that's for potential, either they are customers, following up on customers, recruits, and people who might be willing to have classes. So um, let me ask, let's see, where are we at on these here? I get mixed up when I'm in different classes with different people, what number we're on. Okay, so you guys have the calling sheet that I've created for you, and your job was to put in the five questions. Has anybody created those five questions for your sheet? For any of those subjects? Customers, hostesses, okay. Nobody really has. So this is this is where it's important that you start doing these questions, and because you're already working with people, you're already meeting people. Um, Jordan, this is one of those things. This this can maximize your time with the people that you have. 
knowing what questions to ask so you're not spending too much. It's so easy to get on the phone and end up shooting the breeze with somebody and you don't have time for that right now. You know, we got it. But the thing is you're still showing you care by making sure you get right to the heart of what they need and getting to it. It, it doesn't make you heartless. It just means you're very deliberate. Um, and same with Hillary. So Barb, what we want to do is help you have some things that you can say, but really rather questions you can ask at your classes to see, you know, who might be interested in an opportunity to make a little extra money. And we kind of say it like that. We know there's an opportunity to make a massive amount of money, but most people don't believe that at the very beginning. It's a little more gentle or there's ways to say it where you, you know what, there's opportunities to make a little extra money, there's opportunities to make an income that replaces your income. But either way, whether you want to pay for your daughter's dance or you want your husband and you to retire earlier and you do something like this as your job, either way it's an opportunity with doTERRA. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, one thing that you can do is have like a questionnaire sheet that you hand out at your classes that get an idea from people, you know, if you were to make, if you could work a couple extra hours a week, you know, would you like to work a full-time job and, you know, possibly replace or double your income? Would you rather work part-time and have a better income than, you know, something made minimum wage? Or would you love to work a couple extra hours a week and have just extra slush fund money or, money that goes towards, you know, a new car payment or something like that. You see what I'm saying? Like we can kind of get a feel for where people are by the questions that we ask. Does that help, Barb? Yes. So tell me a little bit about why you want to find a team builder. What was, why is that important to you personally? Um. Uh. My goal is to be silver, and so I would need two more uh, people to, that want to build also and want to probably have the same goals as I do. Okay. So Not just you like to share, but actively build. Okay. So when would you like to do that by? Well, I've made my goal by the end of the year to be silver, by okay. the end of the summer to um, be premier. Gotcha. Okay. And how many recruits do you have to have to be premier? How many new ones? How many more people would you need to sign up as a builder? Um, one and possibly two just, just kind of depends on where my people are right now, what they want to do. Okay. So Hillary says it's based on volume. So two builders who each have 2,000. Two build it has two thousand. Okay, so this is the thing, Barb. What the reality is, which when you know it, it just helps you faster. But at the same time, it it is kind of like something you're not going to want to hear. The fact of the matter is, to find builders, you probably have to recruit three, maybe four, hoping one will end up a builder. Okay, okay. It, it is a little bit of a numbers game. It doesn't mean that those people won't do some sales. It doesn't mean that um, they're slackers or anything like that. It just, the, the fact of the matter is 20% of your people do 80% of your work. Okay. It's just, it's just, an, it's just kind of a universal law. Rather, I mean, it's the same with people that give donations. It's, it's just, there's this 80, 20 rule. It's just how it works. Okay. So what you want to do is kind of leave yourself open to finding three people. And the thing is, sometimes you have this person who says they really, really, really want it. And they're going to do great things. And quite frankly, they just, for some reason, life happens or they're, they talk bigger than they act or, you know, whatever it might be. Sometimes it just doesn't happen the way they, you know, they sound like they would. And it's not that you don't believe them. It's just that you have to keep them in the back of your head. Well, I'm going to recruit three to four and see who really is serious and who's ready. Because 
you know, it's not always comfortable talking to new people. Some people don't like to be in front of a group. You know, everyone's different. Everyone has different reasons for doing these kind of things. And it's, it's one of those things, Barb, where we can help you start offering the opportunity a little more by asking good questions and finding out who's just interested to see if it's something that they could be successful at. Okay. But it still comes down to over and over again. It's about questions. It's about questions. It's about questions. Okay. Um, it, an option is to just talk directly to people and say what you have to offer. Um, I just personally believe in sales that it works a lot better if we ask questions first, find out what people's needs are and then go, Hey, you know what? You were saying that you really wanted to replace your car, but you know, couldn't afford a new car payment. Can I tell you a little bit about how I bring in, you know, a little bit of extra money in my family? Anytime we ask permission to share something, it always goes over better. Does that kind of, do you see kind of how I do that? Ooh, I just lost Barb. Okay, I'm not sure where she went. Okay. I'm going to, we're kind of like off track here, but that's totally okay. Okay, I see Barb pulling back up. Okay, here she comes. There you are. We lost you, Barb. Okay. So let's get talking about some of this stuff today. It actually, I think, will help <laughs> with some of the stuff that we're talking about. Okay. So, um, Barb, how comfortable, any of you, on a scale of 1 to 10, how comfortable are you with getting a no? Jordan's like, ah! who can get a no? And it's not devastating. A no for recruiting or a no for just a no class? For sales, no for recruiting, no for class, just... No, not interested, but thank you. How comfortable is a no? I mean, I deal with it, but I don't don't like getting those. <laughs> okay. How about you, Barb? Um, probably an eight or a nine. I mean, I can let it roll off my back. It's no big deal. I mean, okay. I'd rather know one way or another, and then I can just check them off my list. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And, and Hillary is saying, well, she's kind of changed her mind between 50 and 70%. Okay, so let me tell you, there's a book I really like. It's called Failing Forward. And this is why you might want to get comfortable with no's. Um, I didn't really follow. Did anybody do my challenge last week with get 10 bizarre no's? Anybody ask for weird things and do your 10 no's? Did I even remind this class to do that one last week? Sometimes I don't get to the end of the lesson. <laughs> Anyone get 10 unique no's? Okay. Hopefully you're working on that calling system. You don't think I mentioned it? Anything's possible. Okay. All right. Well, you can take on that challenge this week. What's kind of funny is just 10, 10 unique no's. Hey, will you, you know, you're sending in line for coffee. Will you buy my coffee today? Ask your husband if he'll do the dishes. Ask, I mean, it can be any bizarre thing. Okay. But the fun thing is you'll find people that will say yes. And that's the thing. Asking questions is the secret, one of the secrets to success because the only way you're going to get a yes is if you ask, actually ask. If you don't ask, it's an automatic no. Okay? Now, there's this book called Failing Forward that I like. Now, I, I, I read this book, but I actually can't remember a ton about it, but it's just the, the whole uh, premises behind it. The book, okay, so the saying usually is, ready, aim, fire, right? Okay, that's the same. But people are in business or even just trying new things the same. How about, what usually happens is somebody, you know, takes you, you know, ready, aim, fire. But usually you don't hit the bullseye and you have to readjust and then you have to fire again, okay? They're saying, ah, you don't know where you're going to hit. You're going to have to readjust anyway. Just ready, fire, and then aim. Get out there, shoot, see what happens. Okay, that's where I hit. Now, now adjust and, and aim. So they're kind of saying the whole idea is just start 
talking to people. Just start asking. Just start seeing what happens and realize you're going to say some things that you're going to go, well, that didn't go very well. And then you're going to say some things you're going to like, wow, they really opened up to me. And other things you're going to go, oh my gosh, I, I really didn't think they would be the person that'd be interested in this. And we get all sorts of surprise results from things, okay? So we want to kind of get you in a mode where you do a ready, fire, aim, okay? I know these questions might, this whole concept of asking lots of questions versus just talk about doTERRA. Um, every company out there, it doesn't matter what they're selling, they're going to want you to have really good product knowledge. And of course, you don't want to look like an idiot. Nobody wants to not have all the answers. But any of you, if you asked me a business question and I wasn't sure, would any of you be really mad at me if I said, you know what, I'm not sure of the answer to that, but I'll get back to you on that. Would that really bother any of you? Would any of you be really upset? Would you be upset, Jordan? Would you just say, I'm done with the class? No? <laughs> you would still like me? <laughs> Barb, would you still like me if I didn't know the answer to a question but said I'd get back to you? Yep, as long as you got back to me. Okay, <laughs> we'll still be friends. All right, so that's the thing, is that we don't have to have the answer to everything. But what I see sometimes is that people spend way more time trying to figure out all the perfect answers in regards to their product, but they could be spending... Um, you could be spending just a little more time on your business skills. And sometimes we just have to try it and see what happens. It's just kind of what we have to do, okay? So one of the things that's from this book that I just love, it's called Failing Forward. I believe in this book so strongly. If you need, it's not a real long book. It's not a real heavy book. It has lots of different stories in it. It's just a fantastic book, and you learn lots of different principles in it but there was this pottery class okay and they in the class they they split up the group and they said okay this group is all going to be about quantity you're going to produce as many pots as you can make and on this side of the group you're going to design and spend all your time creating the most perfect pot you're going to be completely judged your grades are going to be based on quality. <laughs> so the class went to work. The quantity people knew that their pottery would be judged by weight. They would weigh all the pots and see how much they created. The quantity, quality, excuse me, the quality would be judged on its size, its texture, its shape, its painting, all these things. So they went to work and they came back. And they weighed the quantity group, and they had a nice fair amount. And then they looked at the quality pot, and they started noticing something. Which group do you think actually had the better quality pot? The quantity side or the quality side? Let's have a vote. What do you think, Jordan? Quality or quantity? Sorry, can you repeat that? I was messaging my contact back. She's putting an order oh. as we speak. <laughs> okay, there was these two groups. They were they were making pots, and they could either do quality. They they were told to do a whole bunch of pots. The other one was told to do one that was just perfect. But by the end of the class, which group really made the better quality pot? The one who made a whole bunch, or the one who took a ton of time designing and figuring out the way to make the perfect pot? Well, the ones who took the more time. The ones that took the more time? Okay, what do you think, Barb? I think possibly if you had more quantity, maybe you got better every time you made them. Okay. How about you, Hillary? Quantity side. The quantity? It was the quantity because they just got to work and they learned from the mistakes. Okay. There is actually no failure in life. They're only learning experiences. If you get up and get keep going, have you really failed? Okay, there's really no failures. You've just got to keep going. Okay, failure is simply learning experiences. There really aren't failures. 
failure is if, is if you totally give up and never try again. Now, you can make a choice that this isn't for me and I'm choosing not to do it anymore, but that's a choice, okay? Failing is just not getting, choosing not to go there ever again, okay? All right, so let me tell you, there's only two ways to make income. The only two income-producing activities are seeing people and being on the phone with people. And I guess there would be maybe a little bit with social media, but for the most part, that's just fluff. If you can come up with some customers because of that, but you still have to call them and follow up, okay? But the fact of the matter is, there's only so much that you can do via email, messaging, those kind of things. Being on the phone and seeing the people are gonna be your top two methods for being income producing. No matter how good your flyer is, no matter how good your Facebook post is, no matter how good your free thing is to offer, any of those things, the only thing that makes money is to see people and to talk to people, okay? So that's what we wanna make sure that you're focusing on. And so what I want to ask is we've talked a little bit in the past about um, helping, you know, finding new customers. How's it going with either talking to new customers at a class or finding new customers while you're out and about? What's working for you and what would you like to try that you haven't yet? How about you, Barb? What are your thoughts on that? Um, right now, I'm still working on people that have kind of done a one-on-one, -on -one, and so then I'm working with them to either having a class or giving me some referrals. I haven't run dry yet. Okay, great. So what are your thoughts on finding new people while you're out and about in addition to that? Oh, that terrifies me. That terrifies you. Okay, well then we'll teach you really good skills at getting referrals, okay? <laughs> that's all right. But we will have to teach you some referral, and that's coming up. That's, that's one of our weeks coming up. How about you, Hillary? What exactly was your question? Has to do with finding new people. How are you feeling comfortable with the skills you've been taught with asking a lot more questions, finding three needs before you go into telling about the product? Um, I've actually, yeah, I've been doing that quite a bit, just trying to talk to people and I just find it hard sometimes to try and sit down at the park to talk to people when I'm chasing someone. Through the well, park. yeah, no, there's a time and place for it. Well, it's been a little harder, but when I have the opportunity to talk, I don't, I don't find it's too hard to just sit down and start talking. Cool. And how's your rate with finding people who are interested in hearing more about the product? Um, I've had a lot of good leads in the last week for classes and one-on-one for this month so I'm excellent. excited excellent congratulations how about you Jordan I'm fine with like talking to new people like at classes and everything but when it comes to like just being out and about it's really hard for me to you know branch out I'm not really around new people or new contacts I've just been home a lot with the kids and and we haven't honestly got out that much to try those different things and just right. stuck here with <laughs> well especially as your kids get just a titch older Jordan like going to story hour I mean that's a simple one when on their age level you can find start finding a few little things that your kids can go to you can interact a little bit more I know it's like I know when they're this young, it's like they're in, and they actually are mobile. It's just kind of like survival mode because they don't understand no and you know. But I promise you, this is a phase. It doesn't last forever, so hang in there, okay? But um, you know, think about just either water, you know, the little parks with the water, thing, not water parks, but splash parks. That's what they're called. I'm like, there's a different name for them. Splash parks, the library. Um, you know, there are some things like that and maybe you're not interested in leaving the house. I don't know. But the thing is the fact that you're having class after class and building on that, if you don't need new leads, that's one thing. Um, you just want to open the door up for whenever you might run into somebody because realize, you know, God's putting people in your, in your path as you go along your life. 
Okay. And, and Jordan, one of the things you can do, one of the things I started with was just simply the goal that I was going to make more friends when I was out and about, meaning I was just going to give more compliments. I was just going to say hi more. I was going to talk to them and their kids a little more. You know what? You can do something as simple as just simply make a goal that you're going to talk to people a little bit more when you're out and about. It doesn't have to be business oriented right now until you get a little more comfortable with that basic principle. And you will see it will move into that faster than you realize. But right now where you're not doing it and it doesn't feel natural, it's like, ah, but I mean, seriously, whether you want to compliment their purse or their kid or boy, how to keep your kid to sit in the seat or, you know, whatever it may be, just simply make a goal to make a few more friends this week. And see how it goes because I'm, I'm betting you're gonna find it's not as bad as you think because you're very passionate about your product and your opportunity if you hear someone saying man I just don't know what to do with this kid who keeps getting sick I don't see you keeping your mouth shut right okay but you just need to open up that door to see if a conversation goes that way it's totally okay if it doesn't go that way every time does that make sense you don't need to or really should offer it to every single person we offer it to those that we can see need that or we kind of get this feeling in our heart where we just need to um, see if we can offer them an opportunity to learn more about it does that kind of make sense okay all right Okay, so let's go back to the culling sheets because it's something that I really want you to do. Um, Hillary, any chance you have your three-step, your phone calling system in front of you? Okay, can you can you unmute yourself and role play with me? Sure. Okay, so can you be the caller, meaning the person, the salesperson? And I'll be the person on the other side. That look on your face of pain. Okay, do you want me to do it first and then you get to do it next? Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so we'll start. I'm not looking at mine, so I, but I think I know it. So let's see, which product should I pretend that I'm selling or what scenario do you guys want me to practice? Do you want it to be a product? Um, posting a class. Posting a class, okay. And OCD I already have class, everybody good with that one, or you want to do it recruiting? Posting, recruiting. Which one, Jordan? Which one, Barb? Either one? Okay. Barb says class. Okay, so we'll do class. That means you get to do recruiting. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, so we'll just use your real name. Your name's Hillary. And where do I know you from? Where did we meet? Um, at the Health Expo. At the Health Expo, okay. And did we talk a little bit about um, a certain health issue, someone in your house? Uh, my kid's being sick a lot. Your kid's being sick a lot, okay. All right. The only tiny problem is I don't know all your products, but I will fake it, okay. All right, so humor me if I do something dumb when in regards to products, okay? All right, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Hillary? Yes, this is. Hi, Hillary, this is Michelle Withers calling. Hi. Hi, Hillary. Hey, if you recall, we met at the expo last week, and we talked a little bit about your cute kids, but how sometimes they frequently get sick. Do you remember chatting with me a little bit about that? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, awesome. Hey, do you have just a quick minute to chat? Uh, yeah, I do. Awesome. Well, Hillary, the reason I'm calling is um, you saw some of our samples and our products there, and we have some kind of interesting alternative methods that people are finding works really well for a lot of different reasons. And we talked about your kids and having a few little health issues that you wish you didn't or didn't have to go to the doctor so often. And I'd love to just explore and get a little bit more knowledge on your kids and what kind of things that, that they end up getting sick with. Is that okay? 
Sure. Okay, now remind me how many kids you have. Five. Five. Wow, you're Wonder Woman. Did you hide your cape or what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me um, a little bit about what they've gotten sick with in the last, any illnesses in the last 30 days? Uh, yes, they got coughs. Coughs. Okay. And how long did they continue on? Was that short-lived or did it keep going and going? They're still getting over it. They're still getting over it. Okay. So what methods are you using right now for that? Um, well, we've tried cough medicine a little bit and you gave me that sample of peppermint, but I didn't really know how to use it. Okay. No problem. That, you know what? Let's... The expo is so big, it's a lot of information to take in, so I totally get why you wouldn't know how to use it. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, tell me in the last six months, what other are there any other illnesses that your children have caught? Or? Well, at least once a year we get pink eye. Oh, pink eye. Oh, that's a fun one. With five kids, does it pass through all of them, or can you usually zap it on the one child? You know, mostly everyone gets it. Oh. <laughs> Now that's always entertaining. So tell me a little bit about how you treat the pink eye. Oh, we just have to go to the doctor and spend forever and then get a prescription and do eye drops and the kids fight it. It's not fun. Oh, that doesn't sound fun at all. Oh, shoot. Well, tell me just a little bit about now you have a sweet husband. What was his name? Chad. Chad. Tell me a little bit about does he have any health issues that either of you are concerned about or any medications that you wish he wasn't on? Uh, no, just sore muscles from working around the house. Sore muscles. Okay. And how often does that occur? Well, it seems like weekly he needs a back massage. Uh, need or want, is that relative? <laughs> okay. And how about you, Hillary? Is there anything that you'd like to improve about your own health? Oh, uh, maybe so I don't look like a mom of five. I could lose some weight or something. Lose some weight. Okay. Anything else? How are you sleeping? Five kids. That's got to be. Uh, yeah, maybe something to help me get to sleep might be good. Help you get to sleep. Okay, great. Well, based on some of the things that you've told me, you've talked about your kids and having cold and pink eye and your husband with sore muscles and then you with just, you know, wanting to get a little of that, you know, baby weight that you worked so hard to get on there and, and also having a little more energy or getting to sleep better at night. I have a couple things I'd love to tell you about. Is it okay if I tell you a little bit about some of the things that we offer? Sure. Okay. So this is where you experts would tell them a little bit about, you know, your um, on guard and your blue, I no blue, what's it called? Deep, Deep blue. blue. Thank you. I'm like, ah, sorry, say try. Um, and your melatonin, what do you use for your? Serenity. Serenity, okay. And say, you know, listen, let me tell you, there's a couple of things I'd love to see you try. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not like the oils are free or anything, anything costs money. But one of the things I can do is help you get some stuff at a discount or even for free. Do you have any other friends who ever have some of these same issues? Uh, yeah, I do actually. I have a few friends so, from, church. from church. Who do you know who has lots of kids like you? Melissa, Emily, Sarah. Cool. Who do you know who has husbands that work hard around the house and sometimes that either the wives or the husbands get sore muscles or maybe even an athlete? Um, yeah, probably five more friends, you know, that husbands deal with that labor stuff. Cool. And who do you know? You know, one of the things that we're finding around here this time of year is people have struggling with allergies. Do you happen to know any friends that struggle with allergies in this area? Yeah, I can think of a few. So and so and so and so. Okay, great. Um, how would you feel about giving them the opportunity to learn a little bit about some of these products? Do you think any of them care about having things that are an alternative to over-the-counter medications? Um, some of my friends might be open to that. Others, I don't know. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things you don't know until they invite them or, you know, give it a try. Well, this is what I like to do. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts on having a few friends over and trying some of these products as a group. That might be fun. 
Would that be fun? Okay. Are you a hostess with the mostest kind of person? Do you like to have friends over? Yeah, I like to have party. Awesome. How would it be to get one of these oils for free that we talked about that maybe would help your kids or you or your hubby? Yeah, that would be a good idea. Okay, awesome. Well, looking at my calendar, I usually do classes on Tuesday nights or on a weekend, like on a Friday night or Saturday. Which of those would work better for you? Um, probably Saturday when my husband can take the kids. A Saturday. Okay, perfect. So let me tell you, look at my calendar. I have the 7th and the 14th available, my next upcoming Saturdays. How are either of those for you? That works, the first one. The 7th. Okay, perfect. So when we do, Hillary, I, I've got your address here. Double check the address, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to bring you over some samples and tell you exactly how to use them so that you're getting some of the benefits even before your class. Because then when you're calling people, you have a lot more enthusiasm about it because you haven't had to give your husband a back massage that week and your kids are all healthy and no pink eye for your party. How's that sound? Sounds good. That's I'll, a great idea. Okay. I'll bring you some invitations and kind of some things you can tell people and we'll have this little class with your friends. Sound good? Good. Okay. Awesome. Hilary, thank you so much for your time. I'm really excited to come to your class. If there's anything else you think about, help things, maybe of extended family, anyone else who has some issues that you'd like some information on, see if we have an alternative source for it, be sure and let me know because I'd be happy to give you any information about those kind of things, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. I will see you on Tuesday with some samples. Thanks. You bet. Bye-bye. So what do you do for the people who are like, no, I don't know anyone who, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm worried about asking, so who do you, do you have friends who have lots of kids who get sick? Like asking those questions, I'm worried that they're just going to shut me down <laughs> and I guess say no and say, no, I don't have friends. No, I don't have that. And then I'm just dead in the water. I don't know what I'm worried. I guess that'll come. Okay. So let me ask you this, Hillary, if they don't have friends and you're trying to get them to have a class do you think they would say yes to having a class if they had no friends? Yeah, that's true. Do you see what I'm saying? My whole goal with that, with the class, is getting helping them pre-brainstorm. It's kind of a hostess coaching kind of technique. Getting them to think about Because if I hit them with, hey, how about we have a party? And they're like, uh, I don't really know who I'd invite. What I don't like to do is to try to overcome an objection. I like to pre-go pre around the objection to some extent. I mean, to me, one of the main object objections would be, I'm not really sure anybody else wants to hear this weird oil thing. You know what I mean? Maybe it doesn't really work. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? You're on mute, Hillary. Try again. Sorry, I got a call from school. I have to go pick up kids. Oh, okay. So I will call back on my phone and listen to the rest. Okay. We're almost done anyway. But do you ever have people say, I'm not really sure who would I'd invite? Yes, a lot. <laughs> okay. So that that's the, that's the pre-solution to it. So walk them through that and say, you know, talk about their life, get them to open up, and then say, do you have friends who have kids who get sick and do that and that'll help yeah but you want to say who who do you know versus not do you know you want it to be open-ended versus yes no okay perfect do you see what i'm saying the difference okay have you used the calling sheet yet hillary no i haven't made any calls okay yet. So I'm going to challenge you to use this and at least use this first three steps with anybody you call. It doesn't matter if it's Jordan, Jordan or Bob. <laughs> ah, Jordan or Barb. I'm mixing and combining names. Sorry. But anyone you're calling, use that phone calling system, okay? We're, we're done in two minutes anyway, so don't get back on. You can watch the last five minutes with your hubby. Okay? Good luck with kids. I hope nobody's sick. Okay. So, Jordan and Barb, what did you learn from the phone calling system, that mock call? 
You're both on some good ideas for me. There's some good ideas. Would that yeah. be a benefit? Could you kind of see how to do it? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this is recorded, okay? And I'm telling you, I know it feels really weird at first, okay? Because we're used to just we're you're used to just calling, hey, can you do a party or hey, can you do a class? So then we just go right for it. But really, you want to find out all this information to see if it makes sense. Because if they don't have any friends that they want to invite, if that's just something they're totally uncomfortable with, if they really don't care if they get it for free. And maybe you want to ask some of the stuff after they try it and they're completely hooked on it. I just honestly sort of forgot that we wanted to do a class one when I started. <laughs> so I probably would have gone off the bit, hey, tell me how the deep blue was going. Tell me how the peppermint is going. Tell me how these different ones are going. Hey, you know, who else do you know that would benefit from these? You know, here's a couple of categories of people you might know. So I probably did it just a little bit wrong. Um, not necessarily, but I usually, usually our, our classes come from people that are really excited about the product, right? So you probably need to show them the product before you do that, but that's up to you. You can go for the gusto if you want. Does that make sense? How did the phone call make you feel, Barb? Was that comfortable with something to do something like that or like? Yeah, a lot more comfortable to overcome the objection before the objection becomes voiced. Right. Perfect. Okay. I really would like to challenge you both to make those five questions that you need. Okay. On the customer and the class and the recruit one. Okay. Barb, start with the class. If you don't have time to do all three, do okay. the class and the product one. Where's this at? Hmm? Where's this at? I can see it on the paper. The five questions? It was on last week's assignment. I'm pretty darn sure. Let me look at my notes here. Should be in number six. Yeah, on the back side of me. Did you find it? Okay, so the whole phone calling system, there's, just, there's one, two, three, four, five, nothing next to it. That's where you need to fill in some questions, but email them to me. I can help you with the wording, okay? Like if you know, I need to ask about this, how do I, you know, how do I say it? And especially in that open-ended question versus a yes, no. It takes practice to do that. Like, don't let it bother you, okay? It does take practice, and you will You'll get better and better at it. It's so cool to see what happens, okay? Have fun with this, because you will get to know so much more about people, and you'll feel so much more authentic, and you'll feel like, wow, I can really help people, because I know how to pull out their needs. And because I pulled out their needs, I was able to give them the perfect product. Is that, do you see what I'm saying? Why that's so beneficial? And it's not just so you sell more. You will sell more of the perfect product, which will then create repeat business and referrals because people love what they got. We don't want that um, uh, impulse buying kind of attitude because they won't necessarily use it and they won't necessarily be repeat business. Does that make sense? Why? Okay. This helps with all those things. Then you don't have to spend as much time finding customers because you have repeat business and you have referrals. So you don't have to talk to people at Walmart if you don't want to. <laughs> okay. When you do this effectively, it just trickles down. It's kind of a domino effect. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. You can totally do this. Like I said, I know it's going to, you're going to get on the phone. You're going to say, hi, this is Jordan calling. And you're going to pause and you're going to think you're going to die because there's silence and you really won't die. I promise. <laughs> and your heart pounds and it's uncomfortable at first, but just do it. Okay. So try it with a friend, Jordan and Barb, you guys could even call each other and you could, you could, you know, Barb doesn't care if your kids are noisy in the background. You could do it during the movie, okay? Call and, and rehearse off of each other a little bit, okay? And, and get it because the words won't roll off your tongue. This isn't what you're naturally used to, and that's okay. 
Okay. But do find someone. I'm sure Hillary would um, role play with you. But sometimes it's good. Sometimes role playing with our leader isn't very comfortable. So, um, you know, role play with each other and see what happens. Okay. Jordan, this will mean a lot. When you're trying to help your recruits, this will really help because when you call them and you're friendly and they talked and you talked, okay, when you're following up on them, you use this with everybody when you're calling recruits and you're not going to say, hey, if you were calling, I met you at this place because we already know each other. Hey, if you were calling, we said we would chat now at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Or, hey, I just remembered that you had a class last night. I wanted to call and see how it went. Do you have a quick minute to talk? Okay. It's just, it's that whole goal, this back and forth conversation. It brings down the walls because sometimes they're worried. Their classes won't always go well. Their appointments won't always go well. They won't keep all their commitments that they were going to do X, Y, Z. And they need to always know that you're there for them no matter what they did accomplish. And this helps all those things. And we'll come up with a list for um, of questions for retaining recruits, too. Because, you know, people come and go, and people have things come up in their life, and sometimes not everybody's consistent. Okay? All right. So, find, so Jordan and Barb, how would you feel about role-playing off each other this week? Yeah. I can try it. Can you do that? When would be a good time for each of you? Do you want to coordinate that now or do you want to call each other? Do you have each other's phone numbers? Yeah, we have each other's phone numbers. Honestly, I need to figure out when would be good because I don't have time for anything in this next few weeks. Okay, I know. It's easier said than done. You decide what you want to do and if this isn't a good time. But the thing is, you're making phone calls anyway, right, Jordan? Yeah. Okay, so I just, you're getting all these trainings for a reason. You see what I'm saying? Try to make your phone calls, even if you only do the first three steps, Jordan. That alone increases your odds of um, closing a deal. And that, what I mean by that, it, it could be a sale, booking a, um, a class, or recruit, any of those things, okay? But if nothing else, please get consistent about those first three steps, okay? Pause, let them talk. You don't go through all three of them, then let them talk. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And come back to this video. It will be recorded. You can go back to it and watch it if you need an example. Okay, that sounds good. I need to get better about calling. I just, everybody that I know just goes to text. And so a lot of people will not answer and then they'll just text back and be like, oh, sorry, I was busy. I'll just text you kind of thing. Right. So... And that's okay. You can still ask questions via text, though. Okay? So you're right. There is a whole generation, especially where you're a little bit younger, and so your circle of influence is probably going to be a little bit younger than Barbara's and I's. Okay? Yes, there's a generation who prefers to communicate via text. And I'm even getting to the point where I'm like, guess what? I'm really busy. Just text me and ask me. Don't expect me to have a conversation with you. Okay? But you still can ask questions and find out needs. Do you see why that's important to reveal those needs? Okay. You can still okay. quick text, how did you go, how did you feel, how did it go on a scale of 1 to 10, all those kind of things. You can still use those even in a texting situation. Yeah. Okay. I've done that even with um, Facebook messages. You know, if somebody Facebook messaged me about my business, never do I just send them all the information about the class and how much it costs and all that. I ask them, what do they need? You know, what are they thinking? Hey, can I give you a call? Because there's lots of different options. I want to find the perfect one for you. You know, you do everything you can to get them on the phone and don't just tell them a price. Do you see why? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Any other questions? Did that help Barb a little bit with the recruiting thing? I mean, I know we didn't hit it direct, but you kind of get why or what what we do. Sorry, I've got these teenagers in the house. I was trying to mute it. Oh, yeah. um, I think, yeah, I think I just need to concentrate more on the classes and mm -hmm. the recruiting I think is going to flow into it as long as I practice the role playing and get good at listening and asking the right questions. Yep. 
And the thing is, you both are so caring. Neither of you just want to talk on top of someone and, and you know, and kind of, I call it infomercial. So that's, a, that's exactly perfect, Barb. That's the whole thing is ask them questions and listen and then match that need. That's the whole key to this is in sales, you actually should listen more and talk less. <laughs> but that's not what's done to us most of the time. So you kind of get it mixed up just a little bit. Even though we don't like it, we don't know anything better to do. So this is something better to do. Okay? Okay. All right, sounds good. You ladies have an amazing week. Practice the phone calling, okay? Practice. But Jordan, send me a couple questions that you might want to send us texts. Okay? Um, especially like if you have a whole group of young moms and you need to follow up on the products they bought, okay? Yes, absolutely. Text and ask how it's going, okay? If they're having, oh, well, I haven't used it yet. You definitely want to go into why. And if they, for some reason, didn't totally know how to use it, which is totally possible, right? Because there's 16 different ways you can use that oils. Or, okay, like I'm keen for, you know, I always laugh. They're like, don't get this in your eyes. And I'm like, you tell me to rub it all over. It's always under my fingernails. I always get it in my eyes. I don't even know what you're talking about, how that's not supposed to happen. Okay. I mean, that's just my stupid, silly thing. Okay. But whatever it may be, find out if they've used them. Find out how they're liking them. And if they're not using them, find out why. Get them using them by offering one more customer service. And maybe whatever their question is can be answered really quick by a text. Maybe you do need to have a quick phone call but you can still ask questions even by that form of communication or even by Facebook and make it open-ended. So they have to give you uh, um, an explanation versus a yes, no. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. How are the oils working for you versus are you using the oils or something like that? Okay, what's been the best thing or what's been your experience with the oil so far? Okay, that sound good? Does that help? Yeah, okay. All right, then ladies, have a great week and we'll chat with you next week. Let me know what I can do for you, okay? Do the okay. phone calling system. Get out of that comfort zone, call and practice each other. Okay, you can totally do it. All right. All right. Thank you. You bet. Have a great week. Ciao. Ciao.